let's talk about some of the shows. It, you've got kind of an eclectic uh, group. I mean, uh, on TV, TV seems to be getting more niche with their channels. You have the Food Network that's got all the food channels. Um, is, is there a plan for that to Revision 3, or is it just whatever it is you think would be popular, that's a show you'll add? We, um, so we're really about creating content for niche audiences and communities that people are passionate about. So right now our stuff is around technology and modern culture. And over time, sure, I see adding in additional areas of programming around different things that people are passionate about and communities that they belong to. So think about that. Media is really about creating communities. Or it's about enabling communities that already exist with something that gives it voice. So GigaOM, the GigaOM show that we were watching when you walked in, there's a big community around Ohm Malik's Giga Omna Media that has the blog. It's got Ohm's show, it's got um, some of the face-to-face -face stuff Ohm's doing, but there was no video program associated with that. So we built a program with Ohm that speaks to that community that lets everybody be a part of it. And we're going to continue to do that around communities, whether they're um, physical communities, whether they're towns, cities, uh, other things, whether they're virtual communities, for example, um, social networks or, uh, I know, or Second Life, uh, and um, communities that have been formed around media products that want to add video onto what they're doing. And how do you build that community for even a new show? I mean, Dignation is kind of, had a huge built-in audience already because of Dig, but uh, what do you do? Is it just comments or forums, or what do you do to kind of keep that? Yeah, well, to, to really build a community today around something, around a media property, it's got to be more than just forums and comments. You've got to give people the ability to participate in it, to suggest what's there. So, and Dig's a good example. The Dig style interface of being able to select something, vote it up and down, is something that should be part of every media property. As I was leaving PC Mag, I built something with a, an open source version of Dig called Plig that allowed people to vote on story ideas and things that, you know, what do you want us to cover? You know, of course, everybody was like, cover Linux, and Linux is way up. But there were a lot of other good story ideas as well. And I, as a media property, you want people to feel empowered. So help them tell you what they want to cover. Help them tell you, have your audience tell you what they liked and what they didn't like about what you did. It's like, and uh, allow them to participate and even give you things that you can then put on. Now, I'm not talking about user-generated shows, but if somebody wants to do a review of their iPod in 90 seconds and send it to us, we could have the audience vote that up and down and say, this is the best one, and we could run that as well. And it just, it's all part of helping people feel like they're a community around the show rather than just the show one way talking to them. And it's also important that the host of the show not be some Hollywood bubble-headed blonde that's got the, you know, a, a video degree, but somebody in the community who can speak authoritatively to the community. So Dig Nation's a perfect example. Kevin and Alex, Kevin sits at the center of the Dig community, and he does the Dig Nation show. And, and so it sounds like you're, you're all about the hiring of the town. Rather than building the brand of the show so much, it's about building the star of the show, the, 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 the talent, the host. Yeah, well, it's about being real with those people. So you want to find people who are of that community and make it real. And this is, you know, you, you look at all the people who are here, most of the people who have their own podcasts or vidcasts are all that person. I mean, it, it didn't get, it, people, the, the stuff that people are doing, uh, and which is why it's so great in this, in this world we're creating, these people are, are just passionate about the topic. And when you do something around the topic that you're passionate about, it's true and it's real and people feel that, hear that, and they want to be a part of it if they're also passionate about that topic. Now, what do you call, do you call them shows, vidcast, what do you call it? I call them shows. Shows. They're shows, they're TV shows. I mean, the, uh, the, the moniker podcast um, maybe, may have outlived its usefulness, although we saw the iPod, which is huge, but it's, it's a video show, it's an audio show, it's a TV show, it's a radio show, it's media. Right. Now, I'll be honest, we wanted to show some dignation as people were walking in, but they swear. Is that, a, I mean, and, and yet, do you have any pushback from sponsors about that? <laughs> you know, it's funny, it actually just came up yesterday. Uh, there are some of our shows where we will do that, um, but it's, it, and Dignation's one of them, because it's kind of free form. Uh, we just launched a show yesterday, Techzilla, which is kind of a technology roundtable with Patrick Norton and uh, Jessica Corbin. And we were watching the show, and you know, Patrick says a four-letter word in the, like the first 60 seconds. We're like, and we're like, wait a minute, this, you don't need to do that, Patrick, stop. And I think he was just so excited to be able to do it, but <laughs> um, we're not, no, you gotta, that, that's not necessary. So um, there'll be a show or two where that is going to be the case, and those are more adult 
But for a show like Techzilla that wants to be really broad and appeal to a lot of people, it's like, no, we got to, you know, let's tone it down a little bit. Now, uh, who, who is the audience for a dig nation? I mean, who's the typical person that watches that? The, the typical person is somebody who is a fan of dig, who is, uh, who is part of that social news community around dig, somebody who uh, has grown uh, to like Alex and Kevin and wants to hang out with them for 45 minutes or an hour a week talking about the big stories on dig. Typically, it's, um, you know, it's between 18 and 35 years old, the elusive audience that has abandoned traditional media, and they're watching our stuff. Now, because you're doing such niche content for niche audience, thereby you kind of, your universe of potential advertisers or sponsors is pretty small as well, so... Um, you would think, but not necessarily. Okay. Um, we've actually had really big success uh, over the past quarter, bringing in people like Southern Comfort, HP, um, Virgin uh, Airline, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin America, whoever they are, the, the American Airline, uh, Virgin Virgin, um, and uh, you know, then and then some of the more traditional ones that GoDaddy and some others as well, but large br large media brands and people with really big budgets are starting to say they're starting to wake up and be like, wow, there's like this new world out there that you know, there's this audience we want to reach and they're not watching TV anymore. And they're not reading magazines, and they're on this thing called the internet, and um, we need to go beyond the banner. And this online audio and video stuff helps that. So they're waking up and they're experimenting, and we're starting to, you know, we're starting to get some interest. Well, we still hear that a lot. We'll test it. We'll do some testing. I mean, right. are we getting past that? We don't want to be a part of the test. We want to be part of the annual budget. Yeah, we, well, and we've been very successful in a number of tests, and people are coming in in a much broader format with how, us. How are they judging success? What do they want to see? Is it just clicks or is, I mean, how are you judging that? You know, it's interesting. There are some people that are very um, CPC and CPA, cost per acquisition, cost per click, and the success there is, you know, did you, did you move the dial? We've been very successful there. But on the branding side, it's are you reaching a group of people that you want to reach that you can't, and are you getting your message across? And uh, it's hard to measure, but the success is there, and we hear back from people all the time, we love it, we love what you did, you helped us move the needle, um, and they're coming back for more. It seems like when you have something new to advertise on, we have a new media to, to be able to do that. It is a lot about branding, and they're just happy to have the word out there, but it seems like there becomes this transition where they want to see results. And yeah, well, they, they want to know that you reached an audience. They want to know that uh, there were so many eyeballs in your demographic that you reached. And that's one of the problems of the media today, is that we don't know that, because it's mostly downloaded. It's, uh, it, we set it free, and we don't know where it goes, um, which is part of the, the huge benefit of it to the viewers. They can do whatever they want with it. But um, reporting back what actually happened, and being able to go to an advertiser and say, you know, over the past 30 days, we reached 300,000 people, and this is what happened with it. We're not there yet, and that's where, uh, you know, I'm really excited to see the... Uh, Association for Downloadable Media that happened yesterday, the meeting, and that's important to get along. Some of the um, metric stuff that uh, Tube Guru and that Pod Tracker are working on that they've been talking about here at the show, very important that we're able to show an advertiser who they reached and uh, how many they reached, because that's in the end what they want to know. What's worked